circle, puts the shot in the air. Good! The game's over, and the Bulls have won. This is the Notebook Wagering Show on the Wild Style Network. Here are your hosts, Q, Smitty, and Matt. Hey, let's go Thursday night. Notebook Wagering. We are live from the Salisbury Center, powered by Monster Energy. I am Smitty. I am in studio. We got Maddie up in Pittsburgh. Justin should be joining. I think the the Northern Virginia traffic has got him a little delayed. But Justin, you're going to see a guy popping in on the set here in a little bit, and that will be our guy, Justin. So let's get after it, man. We got NFL football tonight. We're going to talk about that, but I know we're pumped about it, man. We're going to break down the trade deadline. We're going to talk Major League Baseball, NFL, college. We got some Olympic thoughts maybe at the end about punching some people down low. So we'll get to that here in a second. Matty, what's going on, my friend? Nothing, buddy. Fired up. Football, uh, I think I heard today, uh, this is the first week all the way up until uh, Valentine's Day that we're going to have some sort of football. Can't wait. We know that's the uh, straw that stirs the drink. We still got a lot of baseball talk, big trade deadline. My my favorite, one of my favorites, the Olympics. And let's roll, pal. Okay, man. Let's get right after it, man. So the trade deadline was, that was Tuesday. That was Tuesday, six o'clock. Maddie, a lot of deals did go through. I think there, I think I heard on somebody's show 31 deals. Not not a major blockbuster. My dad even called me. He's like, okay, so what was the major blockbuster? And I said, I don't know if there was a major blockbuster. I, I guess if you have to do one. It was um, a Flaherty to the Dodgers, I guess. But I don't think, I wouldn't call that a blockbuster. He was one of the bigger names out there. So, I, I you know, I got some thoughts down. I'm going to go to you. I'm going to let you talk. Who is your winner or winners? Who is a team that, again, you were like, or teams that, wow, like I, I they should have done more. So what do you have? What do you have on the deadline? All right, so my biggest blockbuster, I'd probably say Jazz Chisholm was the biggest name to move uh, to the Yankees. So I'll go, I'll start with, I'm going to actually go reverse. I'm going to start with the losers. Um, I actually think the biggest loser, and it's hard for them to become even more of a losers, are the Chicago White Sox for not dealing more people to re restock their entire organization. So now they have guys who are just going to fall off and they're not going to get anything for them. They did get rid of Fetty, which is which was a good move. And that was a great move by the Cardinals, who I do have in my winner's section. But the White Sox not getting rid of Robert, uh, Crochet, it, just anybody. Sell, sell all. Let's just bring up prospects, give it to them all. Uh, another loser, the Orioles. I don't think they made a big enough splash, and it's going to hurt because the Yankees kind of made a splash but didn't improve their pitching all that much. And then I got... Like three more. Blake Snell, just for not getting moved, because I thought he was going to get moved. I thought he was going to be the big name, especially after his no-hitter. Uh, I mean, that, that's a great name. The Giants are technically still in it, but I don't see them making any hay or any waves. And then I got the last two are not really losers, but they didn't do enough for me to be like, man, that was a great deadline. These guys now have a shot. That's the Mariners and the Pirates. Uh, the Pirates had a chance to improve. I do like that Brian De La Cruz. He's a good power hitter, kind of what they need, but they didn't go get another arm. Uh, they still need a first baseman, kind of. So, And then the Mariners, who have the best pitching staff stat-wise in all of baseball, they only got in, I think, Justin Turner. That's just not cutting it. Uh, these teams, I, 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 I'm, they're holding on to these prospects like they're gold, and so many MLB prospects that are first-rounders or high draft picks don't pan out. Make some moves and go get it. Now, Baltimore, uh, you can say, is a winner, though, because they held on to Jackson Holiday, and now they're going to need him because Jordan Westberg got hurt. So All right. I'll let you turn with okay, well, losers. I Seattle, I, you know, the Turner I thought it was okay. Victor Robles, too, on the Nats, has actually played pretty well. He got DFA'd, and they picked him up. I thought Seattle right now, I think they've added a lot. Now, they were playing Boston. They didn't score a lot yesterday, but that series has been high. But Boston's bullpen's been bad. Seattle has been hitting the ball a little bit. I actually like what the Pirates have done, and I know people, oh, here comes Homer Smitty here. You know, 
I, I said last week on the show, I didn't think the Pirates were going to do anything crazy. I don't think they did. They didn't give up really any of their top prospects. Uh, Brian De La Cruz last night, two hits. Um, I, I'm going to just call him IKF, the infielder uh, from Toronto. I think can, you know, a Swiss Army knife can play multiple positions. I like him a lot. I like some of the minor league moves they did, like Priester that has a six something ERA. They do not need pitching. They have pitching. They have more pitching coming. They have maybe the best arms in the system coming up still. Then you add with Skeens and Keller that Nick Yorkie had a good game last night. Trip away can play second, can play the outfield. The kid they got from, um, uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name from Baltimore. I think he's in trip away. He has 12 home runs, has double digit stolen bases. They, a lot of people down here said he's like blocked in their system. I think the Pirates actually did an okay job. I give it a B. I wouldn't go any higher. I saw a lot of people said B minus. I had it as a B. Not trying to do anything like that. Hey, Padres really went after it, man. The Padres went and got some, they got bullpen. They added a lot of bullpen. That Tanner Scott was the big reliever from the Marlins. Now, did they give up a lot? Yeah, they did. But you got to like what the Padres have done. Padres are taking care of business right now against the Dodgers. I think the last two nights, they're only like four and a half, four games out now. They add Perez from the Pirates. You know, I didn't mind the Pirates getting rid of him. It's it's not that bad. So, um, you know, we'll see. Mets, I like what they did. Uh, Winker out of uh, the Nats. Uh, Paul Blackman from, um, I think, Oakland came to that system. Hey, Dodgers needed some pitching, Matt. Flaherty, again, is he going to be? I, I like Jack Flaherty. I think they really need it because again, you saw yesterday Kershaw coming back. He has not pitched well. They need some. They need some um, arms. I was with you, Matt. You know, Jazz uh, Chisholm's playing great right now for the Yankees. Has a lot of home runs. Playing, you know, they really tore it up against the Phillies. Not trying to rub it in your face. Phillies are really, really struggling right now. And but I'm going to agree with you. You said, and I saw some people. They have Baltimore. They liked what Baltimore did. I'm right with you, Matt. I, I did not think Baltimore did enough. I, you know, they added some bullpen arms. Eflin from Tampa comes into the starting. Not a bad pitcher. Trevor Rogers is, again, again I think had one really good year, was an all-star, but has struggled for the Marlins. I wanted them to go get somebody. And, again, it's like they just keep going. All right, well, we're good this year. Let's, we're going to be good with our prospects next year. Then we're going to be good the following year. Hey, it's t you're there. you got to go win a World Series now. You have the talent. Go get it. Who I thought another big loser was? I thought Detroit. Scoobles should have, I thought, should have been like, should have been traded. I think they should have maybe gone in a di direction with him. Maybe, you know, again, you don't know who these offers are. I mean, maybe some of these teams weren't given enough or in their opinion, but I was shocked he didn't go. I thought Snell maybe was going to go. Were you happy with the Phillies? They added some bullpen depth. Um, happy, yeah, but it, it, they they didn't. No one made the splash. Nobody like Austin Hayes is a nice player. The the depth they got in the bullpen, nice players. Are they? They go back to last week's show. They're not needle movers. I I hate it. It's kind of like, okay, we think we're good enough. We just need to add these, I don't know, regular Lego pieces in here instead of making a Death Star splash. It's kind of annoying. Uh, I'm going to touch on a couple teams that you brought up. So my winners, I actually have the Cardinals because they got uh, Fetty from the White Sox and Tommy Pham. The Big Padres. grand slam the other night by Tommy Pham. Yeah, the Padres, I wrote the same thing you did. Great bullpen help. They have the Dodgers within. They're in the rearview mirror now. The, the Dodgers are in sight. Man, would have Blake Snell look good coming back to San Diego and making a, a run there. That's a great ballpark for pitchers. I don't get it. If you're going to push in, push in a little harder. I thought the Dodgers did okay with Flaherty, Kopech, and then Tommy Edmond. And I, I give the Yankees a thumbs up just because I, I think they did enough to where they'll battle out with the Orioles right there the whole time, maybe for the uh, top spot in the AL. Yeah, I agree with you. Hey, Justin, what's going on, buddy? Hey, sorry I'm running late. That's okay. I said the Northern uh, Virginia traffic on you, man. Yeah. A little sorry bit. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. A little, yeah, that Northern Virginia traffic, man, will get you. That's the way it is. <laughs> did you any, did you look over the deadline at all? Uh, I did. I, I love what the Yankees did. Um, uh, Chisholm's been great 
so far. Um, I don't know exactly how many RBIs he has, but I think he has like three home runs in three, three games or four, or yeah, four three games. Yeah, three and four home runs, yeah. Yeah, he's been, he's been pretty good. Um, I'd like to throw my Nationals in there. I love the pickups they got with the, the farm team. Uh, yeah, they they did pretty good. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, a lot of the players move. There's no star power. There, there's not much going on. It was just kind of moving pieces around. Yeah, I was uh, one with the Nationals talking local team. I was a little surprised they didn't move that closer. But again, you just don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know why they didn't. What teams? Maybe they weren't because some of those relievers. I mean that that um, Tanner Scott man. That, that was that was a big haul. And Matt, mm-hmm. you made a great point. They threw up against you know everybody. All prospects, 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 and they put it on the major league site uh, on channel. Excuse me, and how how. There's not a great percentage that these guys really pan out. No. And I mean, yeah. if you're a bad, if you're a bad organization, that's the direction you got to go, and you got to hope it it does hit. I mean, the Marlins at Tampa, man, they they just gutted. They they got they started. Let, let's start all over again. So, but that's so, uh, real quick. Uh, one point that you brought up, you brought up uh, Scooble of Detroit. Yeah, I actually don't think he should have gotten moved, in my opinion. I, I think that is an organization that needs an identity, and it's going to be him, Riley Green, and the young kid, Max Clark. Now, should they have moved guys like Javi Baez for 10 cents on the dollar? Yeah, and a couple others if they could. I mean, heck, pick up some salary. You're, gonna, you're, you're in the hole no matter what with that guy. They're still paying Miggy Cabrera. I don't think you can – I think that franchise would be like bags over the head. I think we lost Matt. Okay, we'll get Matt back. Hopefully it's not a tornado going through his area again. So <laughs> there he is. Matt, the only thing, and I'll say this, and I think I said it on the show like a week or two weeks ago, his agent's that main big-time agent, and I think he's only on another year contract with them, and they said they he always hears teams out and he likes to move his guys. So is, that, is, is he really going to be in Detroit that long? I don't think so. And I don't know how you can build on that, and that's the problem. If, you, if the agent, and I, you helped me last time. I couldn't remember his name last time either. I kind of forgot. Um, the main agent. Boris. In Major League. Boris. Yeah, Boris, thank you. I always draw a blank on his name. That's the only thing with that. Is he going to stick around there? And if, I mean, again, maybe they think they can sign him. Again, I, I don't know that. So if you feel like you can't, then I, w- I would have got some pieces. Because I think that's the guy that would have been, man, he would have looked good in Baltimore. Snell would have looked good in Baltimore. But we'll see. So, hey, everybody in the chat, Ken, thanks. Mike's here. Chicken squawk, thanks. Let's go Nationals. Man, Nationals the other night, man. I had that team runs over with um, Arizona, four and a half. Hit that in the second, man. When you have Patrick Corbin, man, we call it Patrick Corbin day when he's on the mound. So bad. He's so bad. So bad. <laughs> Corbin will throw a good game, and then he'll, like, it, it will be four in a row. I don't know how he's still in the rotation. He has close to, yeah. like, a six ERA. Somehow he's still in the rotation, but keep pitching them. Please, please, please keep pitching them. I love it so much. So, all right, that's the trade deadline. Just, hey, we made fun of this team last week. And Matt, I want to piggyback what you said. I, the White Sox, too. And the, the thing with the White Sox was that Crochet was very demanding about, he he did he's like, if I'm going to get traded, it has to go to a team, and I got to sign an extension, and you can't put me in the bullpen. And I think that's what killed that. And why would that guy, I was, Matt, I, and just, I was saying this to old man in the garage the other day. I was explaining this to him. I said, why would you want to stay in Chicago? Why wouldn't you not want to get it? They have now lost 17 in a row. They've lost twice this year. They also, they were on a st- streak one time of 15 in a row. And now they're on a streak of 17 in a row. Matty, why did the guy, why did the guy come he out must- and demand all this? He must really love Al's uh, pit beef in Chicago to stay there because uh, I don't know. That team's awful. The stadium's awful. I think they did do some upgrades, but it, it, come on, man. I, I would want to win no matter what. Send me to Seattle. Put me as a mid reliever, a bullpen guy. I'll do a spot in. I want to win a title. I, I love these players. I love that Mahomes just came out and recently said, yeah, I'm, I'm not making this much as Jordan Love, but I'm getting my money elsewhere, and I'm here to win. These guys and their money and their demands, they're fools. How much money do you need? Just suck it up. Go win it. Go win a title. That's a, that's what really matters. 
Yeah, I, yeah. I agree with him and then the outfielder. You know, the I know the outfielder was in a little bit of a funk too, hitting, but I can't believe they didn't move. I mean, this team, they've only won 10 road games all year. I mean, we talked about them. What are they, 18, 18 in a row? Losses? I, think, I, I had 17. They may be at 18 now. I had 17 in my notebook. So, yeah, it's it's a debacle. And, you know, just talking about Patrick Corbin, I wrote this stat down too. And I think this was leading into his stat uh, start, excuse me, the other night. Nats are 2-11 and 11 in his last 13 starts by Corbin. So, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Hey, real, real quick for the listeners, uh, live bets. Uh, 805 Cubs Cardinals. Give me the Cubbies tonight. Minus 115. Imanaga on the mound against the Cards. All right, let's dive into that because I have I jumped on that game too. Maddie, the only thing I'm worried, rain doesn't look good. Could be a little dicey tonight getting that game in. Could be a little yeah, dicey. Okay. But but uh, yeah, Gray against say his name again because you pronounce it a lot better than I would have. What is it? Imanaga. Thank you very much. Yeah, 805. Couple little stats. Uh, Sonny Gray is on the mound. Six one and one to the over on his starts. Cubs are eight and two with him on the mound. Ebenaga, if I pronounced it okay yeah. there, in his last ten starts. So, Maddie, I'm also on that game. And can I just say, I'm going to brag myself and Matt up for a second, man. Last week on this show, we had the late game coming in. We had Oakland playing um, Anaheim, and I said take Oakland money line. I had team runs Oakland, and Maddie said, "Hey man, it's gonna it's gonna score. Jump that, man! Three and zero, great job. You get some winners on this show. I also gave out a three team money line parlay in the Olympics with basketball. That also hit. So I got we got a couple plays tonight. I got some Hall of Fame. We're gonna get to that too because that's getting close to t- kick off here. One more tonight live. Uh, where's my notes here? You got Colorado Angels, Bet Betner against Fulmer." Uh, Colorado and his starts are zero and six in his last six starts. So I'm also on the money line with the Angels tonight. I, I hey, I'm right with you. I also let's do it again. I also like the over in that game. I like the over nine. I know it's a lot, but these two teams sting. Let these kids go up and just hack away. Get us a ten. All right, I might jump. In. I might jump in on that. Last night I had the team runs three and a half over with Colorado. Man, that game was low scoring. So this could be a uh, could be. Uh, wild tonight so low night yeah, last cool. and let's fire all right let's go football did you, you guys touch on a uh, trout another player uh, we talked why don't about? you go real quick into that yeah because somebody uh, in the chat brought that up go just trout is out for the season um, yes, another sir. meniscus there and you know okay so let me ask because we got okay it's it's 748 we got we're gonna be okay we can get some talking hall of fame game get people if they want to take our advice and get some bets in on that where does this guy have to go justin can this guy keep playing the outfield, or is this time now in his career that this guy has to go to a DH position or maybe first base? Or you got to change it up. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think he's going to have to go to DH. I wouldn't even put him in the field anymore. I mean, he's going to hurt something somewhere. Uh, he's injured all the time. Okay, so Justin's calling him the Tin Man. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Justin's coming hard on the Tin Man tonight. Yeah. Mike Trout. We talked about that two weeks ago. I think he came in, had one AB in a minor league game, mm-hmm. and. He had to get yeah reevaluate everything. So, Maddie, what do you think? Can you play? Yeah. Can you keep this guy in the outfield? Yeah, probably on a super limited basis, and you're probably gonna have to try to find a kind of a band box stadium where he's not running all over the place. He's probably gonna have to move to right. Still, I I think he's still okay. Uh, Jason brought up a great point. He's trying to pull the the Rocky Balboa load up in the last movie and get all power and that might not be the best approach he might need to actually go opposite and get skinnier and get some more flexibility and try to prolong his career i don't think the power move is the right move Hmm. all right there you go mike trout white house sports thanks for being here is energy prone that's what he just said about mike trout All right, everybody, boys and girls, we got football tonight. I know everyone's pumped. I know it's the Hall of Fame game, and but it's still football. If you want to get some bets, I did the other day, so I jumped it, and I got better numbers where it is now, and I'm going to tell you why I kind of liked it, but we got about 10 minutes. So we got the Texans tonight playing Chicago, 8 p.m. It opened Bears minus four, and the over under 40 on scores and odds. Texans now are minus two. 
and the over under last time I checked was 32 and a half. And I saw anywhere from like, I had 130 on scores and odds. Another site had 150 money line for the Texans. Hey boys, and this is why I'm gonna throw this out. No Williams tonight. Talk about what, so Matt, I'm gonna ask you this before we go into this. Yeah. Do you, do you gamble a lot on preseason? No, I'll, it's a, it's a pick your spot kind of deal. I, I did throw just a little bit of fun money on this one. I took the bears tonight. And the only reason I took the bears is just because of Tyson pageant. I think it's going to get a lot of run. He played okay in, in the league last year. So you know what? It's a young fun team. I don't know. I think they're going to be on hard knocks next. So why not? Let's go. Let's start it out. Get a little pub. The Texans don't need to go hard out of the gate. They proved last year we got a, a winning recipe. Let's just find some guys who can get some some run here, maybe fill some roster spots. But the Bears got a lot to prove. Everybody has their arrow up. Let's see if they can get it done. Okay, so a lot of things I looked at here in this and on some articles is the depth of the quarterbacks. Yeah. Now, Matt made a good point. Badgett did play. He played four games last year and was pretty good. He was a Division two guy, I believe, Matt, correct? Wasn't he a Division yeah, well, he, two guy? Was he from Eastern Illinois? Was he from where Romo was? I'm not sure. I thought he, I thought, maybe. I know he, I, I thought he was Division two. And oh, I don't yeah, think he I, was. Shepherd, Shepherd University. Shepherd. Okay, that's Division two because they played Slippery Rock a lot when we went there. Yeah. And I they still do, I think. So, he has four games. Brett Ripken has is the backup. He has four games. And then you got Austin Reed. He's a rookie. Big numbers at Western Kentucky. Now, if you look at, Strahd is not playing either. Davis Mills is 26 career starts. Case Keenum, 66. And Tim Boyle, 20. So, I jumped on this the other day, the other morning, guys. I did Moneyline, and that's when Chicago was still favored by like two minus one and a half. I got Moneyline Texans plus 105, and then you know the teaser king came out. First game of the year, let's do a little teaser. I like to tease the NFL. I got the Texans up to seven and a half, and I took the points up to 38 and a half, and I got the under. Now, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let Justin, anything he wants to chime in, then I got a couple more notes from some people. I jotted down, I thought they were good stuff. Anything, who do you think tonight? Pick a winner. Um. I, I, I'm not sure how many starters are playing tonight. I, I've heard the Bears aren't really playing much at all. Um, I, I would still go with the Texans. I, I think they have more depth. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure it'll be a good game. All right. So I, I saw this. Josh Applebaum, which, again, I've talked many times on this show. I just think the guy's brilliant. I love his stuff. He wrote an article on Visa today. Over the last 20 years, favorites are 12 and 5 in the Hall of Fame game. Now, you're going to say, Smitty, that's only 17 games. What are you talking about? But there was the COVID year, there was a lockout year, and there was a year that the field conditions, they would not let the team play. Unders have been 9 and 8 in this game. Now, the last two, he said in his article, have gone over. So just to keep that in mind. And then... Real quick, guys, and then I'll let you chime in anything else. Just some information about preseason. Best coaches, Harbaugh from Baltimore. All he does is win, 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 and he covers the spread. Hmm. Always. 38, 19, and 1. How about this one? Mike Tomlin coming in. He uh, he wins in preseason. 34, 29, and 1. Sean McDermott, 13, 6, and 2. And Jim Harbaugh, he's back. 10, and 6, ATS. Coaches that aren't very good. Sean McVay, 9 and 12 ATS. Dennis Allen, 7 and, lo- 7 and 11, excuse me. Dan Quinn, 5 and 16. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Justin's doing. <laughs> is, that, is that for the, the commander slash Redskins? Are you already. Maybe. Do you have Man. a ticket on their uh, preseason game coming up? Is that what. I mean, this is preseason numbers. This is just. If they're that bad, I might have to bet. You're going to have to jump in. There you go. I like it. We're going to turn. Justin's going to get into uh, some of the lines here. Just one more quick thing with uh, with this. Over the last three years, Bears are 6-3, six 6-2-1 and, three, six, two and one ATS in the preseason. Texans are 7-2 and two straight up, 7-2 and two ATS. So just some numbers. And then we really dive into it next week, guys. you got two games on Thursday, I think three on Friday, some on Saturday, some on Sunday. 
Texans are playing Pittsburgh, and then I believe the Commanders are playing the Jets, if I'm correct on that, if I can read my writing. So, Maddie, I'll go. Anything that I know you, you really follow the NFL, my friend, anything in camps jumping out at you, go for it. I'm going to tell a cool Caleb Williams story. I don't know if people heard or not. Uh, my Chicago guys, shout out to Dr. Doug. Uh, I guess the Bears knew all along that they were taking Caleb Williams. That, but Like, they weren't going to field calls or anything. So when they have, like, the NFL lots team visits, when they had Williams into Chicago for his team visits, interviews, whatever, they were basically installing the offense with him during those times. So he'd be ahead of the curve. And I'll tell you what, I saw him throw a ball yesterday in practice. Boy, did he thread a needle uh, to Roma Dunze. And then Adunze had another great grab. That's something to watch out for. And I'm not a Caleb Williams fan, but he looks pretty impressive. So, like I said, man, the Bears have a lot to hold up this year. They're the team with the big expectations on them. A couple other things. We all saw the Steelers fight. It wasn't a fight between quarterbacks uh, like this <laughs> roaming around the Internet. As cool as that would be to see Fields <laughs> and Wilson fight. But it was because Fields took kind of a like a late hit, a shove, and Hey, good for the O lineman sticking up for him. It seems like the O lineman might be on team fields. And then the other thing is injuries. Um, we know they're going to happen, but it looks like the ACL injury is back in full effect. I believe two starting corners are already out, maybe for Minnesota and the Rams. And then Dallas lost probably their second best pass rusher, and Sam Williams already to an ACL. And to her, and today, uh, Justin Herbert seen in a walking boot. So oh. forget the preseason for Justin Herbert, and uh, that's a scary. They haven't said what it is yet, but they said he'll be ready for the start. All right, I just want to do in the chat, Ken. Rumor is Milton is outperforming Drake May in New England, and then Ken says Caleb Williams is a bust. So more or less, I, can I just – we've talked about this, and Ken's been in the chat a lot. Caleb Williams, you are not getting a Christmas card from Ken. Let's just break that down right now. It ain't happening. I don't see it happening. But <laughs> Kent thinks of Caleb Williams. So don't be looking in the mail for that. Any Justin, anything that you've looked at or with the commanders or you heard or anything pumped about, like or just excited for the preseason? Um uh, well with the injuries, uh Justin Herbert will be back week one. It says plantar uh fascia injury in his right foot. And then I saw that uh DeAndre Hopkins is out for four to six weeks. Um, man, you guys are breaking great injury notes. I, I didn't hear any of this. Man, you go back to day one of your job, and you don't hear anything. So keep going. Anything else? I think we lost the internet for a second. All right. That comes back up, or you get back on. Just cut okay. me off. Cut okay. me off here. Just a couple other things. Um, I saw this from, I think it's Ben Fox on social media. I like his stuff too. Uh, worst NFL teams over the last couple of years, Bears 31, 50 and three jets, 33, 49 and one Carolina 33, 47 and three Falcons 35, 47 and one and the Eagles 38, 48 and three. And this that's against the spread coming up. Anything else, Matt NFL? I think oh, we lost Matt from the internet. Man, the internet, man. Goodness gracious. All right, that happens. Internet dropped. We'll get Maddie back. Yeah, I'm ex I'm excited. You know, and let me talk. I'll talk really quick. Steelers, you know, kind of keeping an eye. I'm still a little worried with the wide receiver position in Pittsburgh. You know, you don't have you don't have a ton of guys. Wilson, the rookie from Michigan, got dinged up the other day. It kind of, you know, when I Heard about it and people on social media, it did not sound good, brought the card out and you always get a little worried there that it's going to be um, bad news there. It doesn't, it sounds like an ankle, a couple, maybe a, a week, two weeks. You know, Russell Wilson situation, I, I don't know what happened. I mean, supposedly he was pushing a sled and I don't know why a quarterback's pushing a, a sled with weight on. Right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, have you ever heard... Have you ever seen that or heard? maybe in height? I don't know. I, I just think that's idiotic. He's got a weird workout anyways. <laughs> well, that's that's good for Pittsburgh people. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of my friends, hey, listen, they think a lot of, you know, Pittsburgh people think it's going to be a train wreck. We'll see what happens there with that. I think 
Russ is going to be okay if he ever gets on. But everything I've been hearing for people at camp with Steelers, Justin Fields is looking really good. So, hey, maybe Justin Fields is going to take over and be quarterback from day one. And I'll be honest, if the guy could throw a little bit, man, you know what he can do running the ball. It adds something, another little spark in the offense there that defense coordinators have to kind of look at. So I'm okay with it. We'll see. But, yeah, that really dives into um, to next week and everything. So we'll see if we get Matt back, but if we don't. But uh, just a couple other uh, – let me see in my notes. People, somebody – bet MGM. Somebody put $20,000 on the Lions to win the Super Bowl. Uh, another person put a big giant bet on – Kansas City to win the AFC West, which they've done it already, I think, eight years in a row. That should be on the feed uh, via phone. Okay. And then somebody else put a little bit of money on the Bears to win the Super Bowl. So good for that person, man. Hopefully it happens. Maddie, if you are on, just jump in and let me know you're back with us on the phone or anything like that. I'm here, buddy. Okay. I'm ready. There you go. Okay, so I was just doing some some bets they posted on social media with um, the NFL. Some people took the Lions to win the Super Bowl, the Bears to win, just some some bets I was throwing out there. So anything else, NFL, Matt, you want to throw out? No, not not yet. I'm gearing up for, uh, like, I, I'm ready for the, the real preseason. This tonight is not real, so... Give me, give me week one. We can see some quarterbacks for a quarter, and then we'll go from there. That's that's when it starts next week. But it is. We do have football, gentlemen. We can go home after the show and watch some NFL, <laughs> and it's going to be fun. So, all right, let's dive into college. Let's dive into college a little bit. I, You know, I've been kind of diving in, trying to – man, I what have I broken down? The Big Ten, the Big 12 – the Mac, I've broken down really good with notes. I'm ready to get in the SEC. And it's so funny you're saying like Big Ten and there's like 18 teams. The Big 12 and it's, I, I don't even know how many. T- and it's like you're going through stuff and you're like, oh, that team, that team's in this. It's This team's in this conference now. So it's kind of funny. Maddie, uh, let's just go off the top of my head. I know Justin's diving into some stuff if we have the internet back with some numbers here and he'll chime in. But, you know, the teams coming in, favorite teams this year, a lot of people are on Ohio State, Oregon, both in the Big Ten, Texas, that's in the SEC now. Um, Georgia, you know Georgia's going to be there. The problem with Georgia is this. Can they keep these guys out of jail and not having, like, car problems and, like, situations the one the one wide receiver supposedly today he got in a situation i think endangering kids i didn't dive into what he all did but i guess he did get dismissed from the team but somebody posted the other day that georgia has like 24 arrests with driving like situations over the last couple i mean can they get a driver's ed course down there for those football i mean what is going on in georgia but georgia's going to be there alabama there's another team that has a new coach, Nick Saban. He's gone, but, you know, the coach comes from Washington really good. They bring back. A lot of people are high on Ole Miss this year. So, Maddie, I'll go with you. Um, just anything teams, Penn State. Uh, let me throw Let me throw Penn State in there before I get bashed by all the people from back home. And they always say I don't talk about Penn State. Penn State should have a good team. So, Maddie, any teams that are jumping out at a quick glance that you're eyeing up that could win – the big one this year. This is what twelve teams, home field in the first round, and it goes from there. What do you have? I'm going to go uh, not longer shots, but we all know the favorites are going to be here. We know Georgia, Bama, Texas, all going to be there. Give me a couple different ones. I do like Oregon a lot. Uh, and it's probably because Dylan Gabriel and the wide receivers. Ole Miss, I would throw into a little fun money, and and then a longer shot. I'm not sure what their odds are. I'd go back to Clemson. I, oh. I think Clemson can win the ACC this year and get a uh, top four seed. So those are three that I'm going to look at. Penn State, forget about it. They're, they're not even going to finish. They might finish fourth in the Big Ten. And oh, they might wow. just sneak into the playoffs. Yeah, come on. They're not beating Ohio State. They're not beating Oregon. And I, I have brought it up to you guys on text and whatnot. I'm going to throw a lock out there. 
and I'm going to put it on. I'm going to put my word and the stamp of approval. Okay. Rutgers win total over six and a half this year. Book it. All right, I'm writing that down. Hold on, because I got I got one in the Big Ten too that I just put a little bit ago. Rutgers, what was the win total again? It was six and a half two weeks ago when I bet it. I don't know if it's moved, but that's a lock for me. Okay, I just let me see in my well, great coach. I'm just looking at my notes. Great coach. I mean, they really pound the ball, man. Sixty-one percent of their plays are on the ground. You know that guy. When that guy was there, it was clicking years and years ago. He went away, and that program really went down. So they yeah. play hard. And, okay, I like that. Okay, I'm going to let Justin jump in, and I want to come back. I want to come back to two things that you just talked about. But I'm going to let Justin really quick. If he's any team that you think you're going to keep an eye on, or who a team that you love and you just want to talk about, go for it. I mean, I'm I'm a Michigan fan. I I know they're going to be pretty bad this year. I, I'm. Man, you're, still, you're you're right with us. We're both Michigan guys too, man. Oh, Matt. nice. So, okay, I did not know that about you. That's yeah. why we brought you on. I like it. Okay, I, go. I'm still excited about their running back room. Um, you know, I know the guy gets hurt uh, quite a bit. Edwards. Uh, Edwards. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, man, that guy's fast. I, I'm excited about him. Um, I know Michigan, Washington, and I think Texas that were the top three. They lost their quarterback. Um, so I would say Georgia's probably going to be back up there. Um. Missouri, Old Miss, um, you know, those are the teams I, I would say. Clemson, you know, they're usually up there. Um, but yeah, I, I think Georgia's probably going to win it this year. Okay, you like Georgia. Yeah. If they can stay not in jail, that's yeah. all i got to say about Georgia. And Bulldog fans, I love you. I love Georgia. I think great head coach. Beck, Beck the quarterback. Beck stayed in one of those hut twins from Miami. I'm going to say it. Uh, Beck was not the best. Attractive looking guy, but good for him. I mean, good. She's they're pretty good looking. So, all right. Um, couple things. Let's go real fast. Michigan, since we're all and Maddie, I want your two thoughts on Michigan since all three of us are Michigan guys here. Then, yeah, you know, I, Michigan defense is going to be really good. They bring in um, a new defensive coordinator. Guy likes to blitz a lot and go after people. Edwards. Yeah, if he can stay healthy. Mullins, the other uh, running back. Wide receivers aren't going to be bad. Their, their tight end is fantastic. Tight end is fantastic. Problem with Michigan this year is who in the world is the quarterback? Yeah. Orgy uh, last year, big guy, big arm, big kid if he runs. I think the uh, the kid that used to be at uh, Indiana is there as the backup. Then they have another kid. You know, a lot of people, I think their win totals nine. A lot of people had the under with Michigan this year. Tough schedule. Second week of the year, Texas. Texas comes into Michigan. They get Oregon. You know, it's they get Ohio State at the end. And again, so Ohio State has so much talent. And I'll, I'll maybe drop something real fast at Ohio State. Maddie, I want to bounce back to you for a second. And maybe this is Big Ten night and because, like I said, my future is on Big Ten too. You said Penn State no chance. No. Okay. I I let me okay, so let me give my spiel and then I want you to kind of say why. Now again, Franklin, guy can recruit. They bring in a new offensive coordinator uh from Kansas. That's what they really needed because Penn State could put points up, but when they played Ohio State, Michigan, it just didn't happen. Play calling was bad. They bring in a really good offensive coordinator from Kansas. Aller, the quarterback, eh. Big hype a couple years ago. Has some moments, then he does it. Running back room, Singleton, Allen. They get the kid Fleming, uh, the Ohio State transfer. I think he was going to Penn State, then went to Ohio State. Now he's back at Penn State. Defense should be really good. I mean, I think Penn State's in the playoffs for sure. That's just my two cents. And a lot of people say I bash Penn State. So, Matty, let's go back to you for a second. Why are you, why are you just, nope, don't like Penn State? Uh, not that I don't like them. They're going to be in that 9, 10, 11, 12 range for the playoffs. I well, think. And they'll get in the playoffs then. I mean, you're in the playoffs. Anything can happen. That's like the Steelers making the playoffs. That, that you're you're going to get there and you're going to get smoked. So what's the excitement? I, that Sorry, that Drew Aller is not quite good enough. James Franklin, he, he'll get out class. They lost a ton of kids in the draft this year. I believe the starting left tackle. 
corners, tight end. Uh, I just I don't think they have enough to retool and get out of the Big Ten on Dave's end. I, I mean, say there's a 10 seed. They're going to have to play Oregon or Texas potentially out of the gate in the playoffs. No, forget it. They're, they'll get smoked. All right. Just remember who said that on the show, everyone. Not yep, Smitty. Not Smitty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go. Ken says go Big Blue. Defense will still be pretty good. Yeah, Ken, I agree with you. Everything I, I've dove into and really read and listened to some people that are just excellent in, in college football um, are going to be very good. Uh, PSU has a favorable schedule. I think they make the play. Uh, yeah, Ken, I agree. with. I think they're in the playoffs. I think they'll be in the playoffs. Um, you know, again, I think the Big Ten, what it comes down to is Oregon-Ohio State. I think Ohio State has to go out to Oregon in the regular season, and then we'll have to see where it kind of goes from there. But I think those are your two best teams. Like Matt said, uh, Gabriel is really good, good system, scored a lot of points uh, last year off my notes. Um, you know, they 44 points last year. They averaged 531 uh, yards in a ga you know, game last year. Tez Johnson's a very good wide receiver. Defense should be good. Now, Ohio State. Can I just say, because, you know, being a Michigan guy, you can't like Ohio State. They better win this year. And they better beat, they better lay it on Michigan at the end of the year. Because if Michigan hangs around or beats them again, there's no way this guy's hanging around. <laughs> this is the year that he has to go. Matt, I'll, one quick thing before, I want to talk really, I'm just keeping an eye. I know we want to talk really fast by the end by the Olympics. Penn State, let's say they don't make the playoffs. I don't know even what Franklin's contract is. Could Franklin be fired after this year? I, I thought he already should have been fired. Okay. Man. Uh, he just doesn't – I mean, have they been in the playoffs under him? No. No. Well, they, well, then what's your point? I mean, time to move on. Go get me. Like, look at uh, look at Bama immediately. Go out, they're going to get the best coach possible. And if they can do that, go get somebody fresh, new. Franklin is a great recruiter, but that doesn't win football games if you can uh, get their talent to come out on the field. And he's not done it. He's, like you said, though, they have a great running back room. But then look at Ohio State's running back room. And it shows the difference in a quality of – talent standpoint, Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins probably are going to go top one, one or for round one or round two. No running backs go high anymore unless they absolutely kill it. But I think the transfer from Ole Miss Judkins is going to kill it out there. All right. Teams I'm eyeing up for the national championship. Keep an eye on Utah. They're in the Big 12. Yeah. They're I like them to win the Big 12. Yeah, they're well. Yeah, I I'll, I'll give you a team. I researching and I heard from some other like listening to some show. The Bear was on this team. Some other people and looking at it. I keep an eye on Iowa State. I know Matt Campbell was the guy that was the hot name a couple years ago. The freshman quarterback last year set a lot of records for a freshman out there. They have a good running back, kind of under the radar because everyone's talking uh, Kansas State, Utah, and that. Keep an eye on Iowa State. I'm going to look at their win total. I have not played it yet, but maybe do a little bet on Iowa State to win the Big 12. But Utah quarterback, I mean, he's back. He's like 29, 30 years old. I mean, this guy's been around forever. I mean, geez, boys. But uh, I and and then I want to do, I want to do Heisman really quick. Anybody that's you popped in your brain about Heisman before I do my um, future, and then we'll do Olympics. Anything real quick. Oh, I had a team and I lost it. Oh, ACC. I wanted to throw this out. Matt, because you said Clemson. I was trying to piggyback off some of your comments there. Sure. A lot of people, I don't trust this coach, but a lot of people like Miami to win the ACC. Understandable. Cam, Cam Hayward, they've done a pretty good job in the portal couple people have also said keep an eye on if you want to and we'll we'll go we'll dive into Heisman here keep an eye on him some people have put a ticket on him just because when he was at Washington State there he was tearing it up and he was right there in the Heisman talk a couple years ago and now if you go to Miami they open up at the swamp I know Q's pumped for that game already but Miami travels to Florida let's say he puts up big numbers there 
and beats Florida, and then they keep going and he wins and they get in the playoffs. Keep an eye on Cam Ward and keep an eye on Miami this year. All right, let's go. High's been really quick. If you haven't looked, I mean, if you haven't looked, you can just say, Smitty, I haven't really looked. But anybody, uh, I don't have the numbers right in front of me. I know some are, I have a couple ideas who I would eye up. But again, if the number's not good. But Justin, I'll go with you. Anybody, Heisman, or do you have any Heisman odds or anybody that you're just kind of looking at and say, good chance they'll win? Uh, so I looked up a, a list. They have Jalen uh, Milrow for Alabama. I like him. Uh, o- Ole Gordon, the second uh, running back out of OSU. Yep. Uh, Quinn, Quinn yours. Yeah, yours your out of uh, Texas. Yep. Out of Texas. And then uh, I don't know if Sanders – Man, I think I, they just throw that in there, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a great point. <laughs> um, Carson Beck out of Georgia, uh, Dart. Jackson Dart out of uh, Ole Miss. And again, you know, smaller schools, but uh, Hunter because he plays two ways, right? Gets a lot of snaps. I like so. Okay, let's bounce off what you just said there. You just, I mean, Sanders is high in a lot of mocks for next year. You just, I mean, I think he's going to put numbers up, but they're probably not going to, I don't think they're going to win a lot. Is that why you're kind of going there? Yeah. I mean, when he faces bigger schools or tough competition, I, so far he's falling apart. Okay. Maddie, any Heisman people? Uh, I'm going to throw a dart, Jackson dart. I like that. I don't like, <laughs> I don't like the top guys because somebody's going to falter and they're going to beat each other up. It's going to be the first six weeks is just, nonsense it's video game stats against inferior opponents so give me dart especially if they can get into the sec play and they pull off some like if they can upset georgia man that's a, that's a resume stealer right there so I, i'm gonna take dart and then i'm gonna go an even longer shot give me kate klubnik of clemson at 50 to one man oh man and I like the, I like the, the little quarterback, the little feisty guy from Arizona, too, who can put up video game numbers, that Noah Fafita for long shots. You want something to root for and some fun? Take, take some flyers. Yeah, I think that's what you have to do with the, the Heisman. I think you got to look at it and go, you need a team that's going to be good. And I think Justin made a good point there, and I agree. You know, Sanders is top guy. A lot of people have him going high in the draft. And he might put numbers, but... Are they going to be any good? I don't know if they're no. going to be any good. I don't think they're going to be that good again. And they weren't. They weren't good last year. No, and I. I don't think. And I'll be honest. I. I think they had a better offensive coordinator, and he demoted them, and then he just took the San Diego State job. Lewis. He went to San Diego State. Better situation for him. Get out of that circus. Because I've listened to some shows, and that's you know that's one thing doing this show. We try to listen to other shows and people that are really in the business of this and give you advice and credit them and give you their thoughts. And some people have said, they don't even know if he's gonna be around after a year. When his kids are gone, he's probably gonna bolt. And that Colorado program, good luck. <laughs> Cause it's not, it, it didn't, and you know, and I got caught up, I like some of the stuff Dion does, but then other times it's like, ugh. You know, and Hunter's like another guy, but I mean, how long until he gets hurt again? If I mean, he's playing DB and then he's catching passes and he's doing all this and he's all over the field. How long until he gets hurt again? So nah, well, I wouldn't take, I, I wouldn't take him either. Here's what's going to happen. What I'm going to do is if uh, Sanders leaves, since Dr. Brent, you and Kaminsky are all playing college football <laughs> dynasty league, I'm going to be the head coach. I'm going to hire them all to come in and run stuff. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. So real quick, where I, you know, Cam Ward, I gave you one there. And yep. I think if you want to go a longer shot, I think that's what you kind of have to look at. A team that could really win, you know, the ACC and get in the playoffs and take a team and put up big numbers. Cam Ward can do that. Um, you know, I'm going to throw out um, Tim Murray, been on the show, hasn't been on because he does a show on VEASAN right around our time, but came on a lot with us over the years. He has a ticket on K.J. Jefferson. Yeah. K.J. Jefferson was at Arkansas. Now, you might go, Tim Murray, what is he talking about? Guy was horrible in Arkansas. Well, he's at Central Florida. Gus Malzahn is the quarterback, or excuse me, is the coach. Well, you know who was? He was at Auburn when Cam Newton was there. Well, he is a big quarterback. K.J. Jefferson's a big guy. 
can run, can throw. Central Florida could put up some points this year. Can they overachieve in the Big 12? We'll have to see. It's a big ticket. Tim Murray got in a big number. I like it. It's a good flyer on that. I like the hey, kid. That, Real quick, that's Matt. Good, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, that's a good team to, to look at their win total over and South Florida. Central Florida and South Florida. Yep, if you great like point. Total, yep. Look at both of them. Like, I don't know about the Heisman, but those two teams just love to run and gun and put up points. And they've improved through the transfer portal. So, so Tim's on to something. I don't know about the Heisman, but I do like the win totals over for both of them. I can't say they're a lock like Rutgers, but. All right. So real quick, my uh, I like the quarterback from Milrow out of Alabama. Again, if his number's not great, I might not do it. I usually do one, um, but I like him. I like. I think Alabama's going to be really good. I, I like the coach. A lot of players stuck around. I think Milrow could put up some big numbers, and I think they're going to be right there. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. Cam Ward's interesting now from some of these other shows and some of these other people. I might take a look. Okay, really quick, then Olympics, and we're going to get out of here. Jess is already in studio, and let's get off and get her in here. Um, I'm over, so we're going to stay in the Big Ten. Maddie already gave out Rutgers tonight. I'm going to give you, and I played this. Now, on my book, I got it at minus 125 this afternoon. I'm taking... The Indiana Hoosiers over five and a half. You get Kurt uh, Signetti from James Madison, the coach. That's where he came. James Madison has been very good over the last couple of years. This guy's a winner, man. Everywhere he's been, he wins. I like the quarterback, Curtis Rourke out of Ohio in the Mac. Guy's been there. It seems like he's been there forever, too. He transferred in. Um, a lot of guys from James Madison on defense came up um, or went west or whatever to Indiana from James Madison. Get a globe, get a map, Smitty. Figure it out. I like this guy. And if you look at their schedule, they open up at home against Florida International. Then they get Western Illinois. Then they go to UCLA. That's also in the Big Ten now, if you did not know that, everybody. And if you listen to that guy give the Big Ten media day, their win total dropped after he got on the mic. He was a disaster on the mic. Didn't know what he was talking about. Couldn't even, like, brag up the program. So, and UCLA is not that good. Then they get Charlotte at home. Then they get Maryland. And then they go to Northwestern. And that's all in September. Later in the year, they get Washington. Washington's not going to be good. Fish from Arizona, the coach that's done a great job. He's at Arizona now. I think they're going to be good in a couple of years because I think he's a good coach. I don't think Washington's going to be very good this year. They lost a lot. And then they get Purdue the last game of the year. Give me six wins with Indiana. Man, because I could see one, two, three, four. I could see four to five going into October. We're going to be right there. I like the schedule, I like the coach. I like the quarterback. Give me the Hoosiers. All right, guys, that's college football. And we'll keep diving into this. We're going to keep going into it. Ken says Franklin is owed big money for a buyout. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Colorado, big number there. Yeah, I mean, make the play. I, I mean, I, I just think, I think that's like LeBron James Jr. What in the, I, I just think you're dumb if you make that. I, I can't see that. I think they owe him like $56 million if they buy out because um, he just signed a 10-year contract in 2021. All right. I don't think he's going anywhere. Yeah. But all right, let's go Olympics really quick. And I know Matt wants to jump in a story, controversial story that happened today. Uh, men's team, I didn't write down a lot of notes on this, but they did beat South Sudan the other day. I did not post it, but I did hit the under 190 on that game. South Sudan lost to them in the friendlies by one. The spread was 31. I was shocked on that. And then it kind of went down a little bit more. I think they won by like 16. I think the biggest story, Matt and Justin, was maybe Jason Tatum not playing at all in game one. I mean, was that a big story, Matt? Well, Tatum didn't play game one, and NB didn't play game two. So okay. I'm, not sure what, I'm not sure what Steve Kerr is doing. I don't think these guys complained. I think it was kind of a take your dose. We're going to sit you. You don't match up that well. You're going to get more run going forward. I'm going to I'm going to trust the process and hope that Kerr knows what he's doing. This team should win. They've actually looked like 
the gold medal gold medal team that we think they are. I think they're still going to get pushed in the uh, uh, round of 16. Serbia's back in there with Joker. And if you looked at the stats when they played Serbia, when Joker was on the floor, it was dead even when he was off, like Serbia was like minus 18, and that was the difference. So Joker might play the whole game coming up. All right. He's that good. Go ahead. Sorry. Didn't mean no, to cut you it. off there. Okay. Didn't mean to. All right. So, you know, again, I, I've said I'm not the biggest Olympic guy. My daughters have had it on in a little bit and everything like that. But uh, Ken has said volleyball games have been home runs. Ken, now this is where Matt's going to go. And, if, you know, again, and I'm going to say this. We don't try to be too political on this show. Everybody has their opinion. I'm, you know, my opinion's in one way uh, different from a lot of other people. And you can have your say. But you know what? We're going to say something here today. So, Ken, and yeah. it's going to, uh, it's going to rot. Let's Iman go. Khalif from Algeria. Okay, hold, ho- hold up, Matt, real quick. S-H-I-T beat out of him. This is. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if he can hear uh, me. I mean, I don't know oh. if he's a guy or a girl. Uh, we're pretty sure he's a dude fighting in the women's boxing division in the Olympics. And he is putting a pummeling on these poor girls who have fought their whole life for their moment to go out, hold up for their country, get a medal, make everyone proud. Everything they've done is drive for And this dude just comes in and is going to tell I mean, he beat a girl today in 46 seconds, said she's the hardest she's ever been hit. I said, and I'm going to piggyback off Jason because Jason made a great point. I'll even go a step further. Like, these people are saying, oh, they should just go in the ring and then quit and walk away. No way, man. I'm going out there, and I'm going to low blow this guy until I'm DQ'd. If I can't beat him, I'm going to prove that you're basically a dude fighting in our sport and just keep punching him right in the dick. I started to say, but DQ me, if I can't beat you, I'm going to prove a point. All right, so I wanted to piggyback. You, hey, Matt. That's my that's my rant. Well said. Well said. And I usually do the rants, but so do you sometimes. But Ken said the Olympics have been great except for the IOC allowing a biological mailbox, a female, and she quit in her Olympic dream over. And, again, I'm going to piggyback off Matt. I, I And I like White House sports. It's more or less what I was kind of going in. He goes, come on, Smitty, say it. The chick has a dick. So, um, yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame that that happened and you feel, and a lot of people told the girl not to get in the ring today and she did. She got whacked about three times and had to say, I'm done. She came out and said, it's the hardest she's ever been hit. I think the, the guy, whatever you want to call it, um, broke the girl's nose. And it is a shame for someone that has, you know, having two daughters, these girls put a lot of time and a lot of effort in their sport. And by far, there's no way guys should be, and I don't care what transition you're doing, they should not be playing or in games against females. So if you want to say that's our first major political statement, guess what? It's our show. We'll say whatever the hell we want to say. So, Justin, anything you want to say about no, that or anything else? No, I, I agree. Um, I, you know, I don't care what people do with their, their personal life, but, you know, bringing it into sports is, is ridiculous. Uh, men should not be facing against women. I, that's crazy. Amen. Amen. Guys, great show. You got Jess coming in next. You know, she's going to be going to have a great show like she always does. Got her guys with her. They're going to be talking all kinds of stuff. It's always entertaining. Check all the shows out, man. John, jump on real quick. We got a new show, right? Up here? We do. We do. Um, Can you just go into our, I mean, I know it's a more, it's a local, more Manassas kind of show, but just give a little shout out to that show, please. Yeah, it's uh, Nikki and Simone. Uh, their show is called Until They Kick Us Out. It's focusing on kind of what's going on in Manassas, you know, promoting other local businesses in Manassas, talking about everything that's happening in Manassas, whether it's the, the debate about the roundabouts, the new roads in Georgetown South, and all sorts of everything that's on all the, the Facebook groups that everybody complains about. It's, it's a little bit of everything of the city we all call home. Well, I, best of luck to them. My wife told me about it, and she put it on for a second. So, yeah, best of luck to them, and I hope they do a fantastic job. I think that's that's fantastic. But, again, stand up and shout. Tribe called Jess. Everybody, real quick, I like White House Sports said, where's Lorraine Bobbitt? She can fix this. And that Lorraine Bobbitt back in the day, trial was here in Manassas. Just a little tidbit on that. Well, she threw the tidbit out right down the street. Manassas Park, right <laughs> yeah. close to this. Yeah, studio. There you go. So there's a little, uh, if you did not know where that happened, that was right around us. But, hey, again, we appreciate everyone in the in the chat. Thanks for being here. 
Justin, any any big plans? Any last words before we're off here? Nope. Nope. Great stuff, man. Great stuff. Glad you can be here. The traffic of Northern Virginia. Got the guy. Maddie, if you're still on, man, any last words? We lost him. We lost. Okay, Matt. Hey, Matt did a great rant there at the end. So that was enough said for Matt. So, hey, everybody, always check us out, man. We appreciate it. And John, you did such a great job the one time, man. What do we always say? Bang your bookies. Now back to putting money in your pocket with the Notebook Wagering Show on WSN. This is the Notebook Wagering Show on the Wild Style Network. Here are your hosts, Q, Smitty, and Matt. Thanks for listening to the Notebook Wagering Podcast.